these are the different type of Swedish snoozes available. Um, you've got loose snooze. Uh, snooze has been available in Sweden for over 200 years. And uh, as I said, it's a pasteurized tobacco. And originally with the loose snooze, it would come in a tub, which if you can still see my screen is, is like this. And you would take it and you would clump it together and portion it yourself. And then you would put it uh, between your lips and the, uh, your gums. And the, the nicotine goes through the mucous membrane. About 50, 60, 70 years ago, it became a thing whereby rather than having to mess around making your own portion, uh, they developed what's called an original portion. And this is effectively like a small tea bag. And it means there's no mucking around. You can put it straight into your top lip and you can get the nicotine uh, going through your system. And that became very popular. And actually, Swedish snus was in many ways a bit like um, old uh, ale drinking. Uh, it wasn't particularly popular, but then about 30 or 40 years ago, it became a bit like craft beer is today, very popular. And more and more young men in particular started to use it. Uh, one of the reasons they think that it became popular was uh, Sweden has and had a uh, national service and you couldn't smoke when you're on duty. And there was an opportunity where you could continue to use nicotine products uh, without having to smoke whilst you're in the army. So that's one of the reasons given why it became so, so popular. Uh, a new version of uh, the portion came out called white portion. This is very similar to the original portion, but it does have some sort of filler material uh, and, and it's not directly as, as much nicotine. And so it can be more comfortable for people when they put it in their gum. Uh, one thing that happens when you start using uh, tobacco snooze and you put it in your, your gum, you can sometimes have a stinging sensation. Over time, as you begin to use it, that, that can subside. Um, but the, the white portion was, was an attempt to try and reduce that. Uh, and our friend Bengt, who, who many will have heard of, has created his own version of snooze, which is sting-free snooze, and that has an extra layer on it to protect the gum even further and mean that new people to snooze are not put off by that stinging. Um, now in the UK, because it's been banned, uh, there's a new product that's come out called nicotine pouches. And again, effectively, it's a very similar product, but it's not got tobacco in. And that means it can get round the ban on tobacco snooze. We're seeing them being sold in lots of stores, uh, Tesco's and Waitrose and Sainsbury's are all selling different brands from different companies. Um, and just to give you an example, here's a photo of how to use both snooze or nicotine pouches. They're used in a very similar way. Uh, they just, you just pop it up between your teeth uh, or sorry, between the gum above your teeth and um, the lip. In terms of the legality, uh, as we said, tobacco snus is illegal in the UK. It's illegal to sell it, but it's not legal. It's not illegal to possess it. So I've got my snus here. I'm perfectly entitled to have it in my possession. I'm perfectly entitled to purchase it as well. So today I actually purchased some snus. I uh, met a gentleman and I was taking part in a legal activity. He was technically breaking the law. What I would say is when I investigate and, and, and study the snooze market in the UK, the police have no interest in arresting anyone. Um, I found no records of them arresting anyone for selling snooze. So although it is technically illegal, it's not something the police care about. And I think that's absolutely right. I don't think it's in the public interest for them to go after people selling snooze. Um, in fact, the gentleman with me today informed me that he'd recently been pulled over by the police and they absolutely they knew exactly what it was and they, they didn't care they didn't have a problem with it he said that a few years ago uh he was pulled over by the police and he had to explain what it was but again they didn't care so he was sort of suggesting they seem themselves to learn about the product trading standards they seem only really interested in what's sold in shops so they're not really bothered by the, the the man on the street selling it to his mates you've got a lot of people from sweden selling it to other swedish people You've got people in, uh, in the city, in Canary Wharf, and that's a big area where people purchase it because they don't want to have to go down uh, to, to the smoking area to consume nicotine, so they can sit at their desk. And this actually is a broad, broader uh, advantage to snoops in that you don't have to, you can do it on a plane, uh, whereas vaping, you can't. The same with heat not burn, which we'll talk about later. Um, in terms of the legality, it's looking like the government is now very interested in potentially legalizing it. Uh, we've got the tobacco related products regulation review taking place next May 2021. 
and the noises from the government from parliamentary questions are that they are they they, they may be taking a scientific approach a harm reduction approach and they could therefore legalize uh, it, it's illegal for us because we're in the eu and that law was passed across as we left um, but it may not stay that way and it, i think it's a great opportunity for us to diverge from the eu uh, reduce uh, the number of deaths from smoking reduce the number of smokers uh, so let's watch this space um, in terms of the safety of tobacco snooze the tobacco snooze is actually the longest running the product with the most history as a harm reduction tool we've got years and years of data from sweden sweden has the lowest uh, cancer rate in men in the eu and this is because the men are very likely to use snooze um, compared to smoking they've got an incredibly low smoking rate uh, the women they're not so fussed about using snooze for some reason uh, and they have a higher smoking rate and because of that their cancer rates are more like the rest of Europe. One thing that is often raised with me uh, I explain that you know snooze is safer someone will jump and say yes but it causes mouth cancer. Now there's a, a major difference between the chewing tobacco in America as I said that is not pasteurized that's actually fermented and that can lead to slightly more carcinogens the data and the evidence on Swedish snooze much lower carcinogens and a large study recently came out 400,000 men says there's no link between oral cancer and Swedish snooze um, in regards to the legality of nicotine pouches as I said that was brought in to avoid the, the ban on uh, tobacco snooze so they're currently legal but they aren't regulated in, in, in their own entity they fall under a general products uh, regulation that is an area where it might and probably should be developed to make sure that the product is uh, probably got a few more rules around it so that actually it can end up doing a, uh, a better job and not causing any issues with potentially too high a uh, nicotine rate. Um, before I finish, I think what I would say is that what snooze and tobacco snooze shows us is that the, the damage when it comes to nicotine use is being caused by combustion. It's not a tobacco versus non-tobacco fight necessarily. It's, it's a combustion versus non-combustion. We'll talk about heat not burn later. That's obviously got tobacco in, but it's not, not no combustion. It's not burnt. Same with tobacco snooze. It's, it's not com combustible and, and it's safer. So we need to sort of change those prejudices and make sure ultimately as many products are available to the consumer. Because for one person, vaping may not work and they want some other form of nicotine. And they may want snooze. So if we legalize snooze, that's another opportunity for them. And if we want, um, maybe some people want to use heat, not burn. Uh, some people want to use nicotine pouches. Ultimately, the more choices we can offer people, the more we can reach that goal of 2030 being smoke free.